Welcome back to this course on metrology. So, the topic of discussion will be surface metrology. So, it is very clear from the topic itself surface metrology means measuring the surface a science of measurement where in which you try to measure surfaces. Moment you say surfaces these surfaces are three dimensional in existence and the surfaces can be flat can be circular and it can have a combination of flat and circular which leads to complex surfaces. Surfaces are very important because when you have uh, when you have several parts when these parts are assembled the surface of these two parts start interacting. So, when it starts interacting they always lead to wear and tear right and second thing when you have surfaces which are very rough something like this very rough. Okay. So, then what happens the load which is taken suppose let us assume here is a load which is to be taken by a surface. Now, you see the load is resting on one point only. So, the load if you wanted to distribute it then what we have to do is we have to break this peak and allow the, the load to be shifted to the bottom surface. So, where the load is getting distributed. So, here if you have rough surface then this rough surface what happens the load will be taken by few points that is point number 1. Second thing is there will be lot of wear and tear. Uh, because the pressure is exerted on the two on the load also at a certain point. The third thing is because of improper surface then there will be lot of vibrations and chatter also and the because wear and tear this wear and tear also leads to premature failure. So, now it is very clear that surface plays a very important role the surface measuring is also very important this will try to dictate or talk about the entire product. So, surfaces play a very very important role that is why today we are talking about nanometer surface finish. When you talk about nanometer surface finish the undulations are almost converted into a line. Now, when the load rests on the line so the load is getting uniformly distributed there will not be any wear and tear or there will not be any premature failure. So, because of this we are trying to understand a surface and we are trying to measure a surface and quantify a surface this is what will be the discussion in this lecture. So, the content we will have introduction then we will have to understand surface metrology concepts then we will look into certain terminologies then we will try to see like we studied about measurement. So, we have, we will try to measure a physical data and this physical data finally, gets converted into a voltage data this voltage data in turn gets converted into another physical output data. So, we will try to see how are the tracing happening then specification of surface characteristics what are the different methods of measuring surface finish and the last one will be stylus based measurement we will go through it. Even though surface is important in many fields of interest such as aesthetic and cosmetic amongst others the primary concern in this particular lecture pertains to manufacturing items that are subjected to stress move in relation to one and another and have a close fits of joining them. So, aesthetic so why are we talking about aesthetic is we have a glossy uh, finish uh, you have a flat finish or a glossy finish you also have something called as a matte finish. So, it tries to have a better aesthetic value and cosmetic value, but these two are secondary importance the primary importance is when uh, the manufactured item subjected to stress moving with one another and then having close fits it is very important for us to measure the surface texture. The surface texture people when that sur texturing is very small they call it as roughness. So, surface roughness or surface texture 
depends to a large extent on the type of manufacturing operation. So, that means to say there is a part. So, we have to see what was the previous step in the manufacturing process this part has undergone and that is what we try to look as a prime focus when we try to do surface roughness or surface texturing. These two depends on the previous manufacturing process. If rough surface for a part is acceptable, one may choose a casting, forging or rolling process. In many cases, the surfaces that need to contact each other, some functional requirement has to be machined, possibly followed by a finishing operation like grinding. So, if you go back and see, if I give you a tolerance of point, point 0.1 millimeter, maybe this can be done by casting. If I try to write 40 plus or minus 0 0.01 millimeter, then it is machining and sometimes grinding. So, you see depending upon the tolerance, the number of process increases, right. So, when we go to a surface, this is tolerance, right, but surface is another thing. Tolerance is the deviation which we give or we accept some variation in the process is tolerance. The surface is talking about the surface. So, here it is more of dimension, here it is more of surface, we talk about the surface. So, if one takes a look at the topology of a surface, one can notice that surface irregularities are superimposed on a widely spaced component of surf surface texture called waviness. Okay. So, when we try to see a surface closely, we will try to see lot of irregularities, these things are called a surface irregularities. These surface irregularities are superimposed, okay. this is a wave and this parameter is called as waviness. The surface irregularities generally have a pattern and are oriented in a particular direction depending on the factors that causes these irregularities in the first place. Okay. Surface irregularities generally have a pattern. So, that is why what we do if we have a large surface area, we measure roughness at 3, 4 points and we talk about the entire surface what is the roughness value generally has a pattern and are oriented in a particular direction because your tool would have moved in one particular direction on the factor that causes these irregularities in the first place. So, these are called as roughness and this is called as waviness. The surface irregularities primarily arises due to the following factors, feed marks of the cutting tool. See the feed marks of the cutting tool, whenever you do a contact machining, the tool is given depth of cut, depth of cut, feed and there is a speed. So, generally the surface irregularities are because of feed. Okay. Chatter marks on the workpiece due to vibration can cost during the manufacturing process also leads to surface irregularities. Surface irregularities on the surface due to rupture of workpiece material during metal cutting operation also leads to surface irregularities. For example, you try to when you are using a soft work piece, a hard tool, it digs. So, when it digs, it ruptures the work piece. The surface variation caused by the deformation of the work piece under the action of cutting force. That means to say, you are taking a very soft material. This problem is very common when we do titanium baffle machining or titanium uh, diaphragm machining. So, in diaphragms, they are all thin thickness. So, when you try to put it in a fixture and start machining it, moment you load it in a fixture, the deflection happens. So, now whatever you machine will be on a deflected surface. So, that is what the surface variation caused by deformation of the workpiece during the action of cutting force is also there. Irregularities in the machine tool itself like lack of straightness and guide and of guide waste, machine tool variation. So, this also leads to surface irregularities. When we try to understand 
the surface metrology, these are some of the terminologies which are used. So, this is a three dimension way of looking on a surface, right. So, if you look at it, so here is what is the first terminology which we have to know is waviness. This is a waviness, okay. The height of this wave is called as waviness height. Predominantly, this happens on a process before machining and during the process of machining, these surface irregularities happen on the surface. So, this is the wave and this is the wave height and you also have wave width to be measured. This is called as a waviness width. Okay. So, now let us look into roughness. So, within a wave you have some irregularities those things are called as surface roughness. Okay. So, the in a surface roughness you also like waviness height you also have surface height. So, that is nothing but peak to valley. So, if you look at it this is the two dimensional view of a surface irregularity and here what you take is only surface. So, this portion is called as roughness height. So, here we try to take peak to valley height. Okay. So, in the same way you also have something called as roughness width cutoff. So, here is a roughness width cutoff which is within the wave you will have irregularities. So, this portion is called as the roughness with cutoff. Okay. Then on the surface sometimes you can have a scratch. For example, you have a very flat surface there is a deep scratch. So, this is the flaw scratch which is there. So, which runs along this direction. Okay. So, this is the between two roughnesses you what you measure is called as the roughness width. So, the mean line of roughness is going to be, so you have a roughness, you have a ir surface irregularity, you try to draw a mean line based upon the surface data. So, that is called as mean line of surface roughness. Okay. Generally, when we try to talk about 40 plus or minus 0.1 millimeter, these are dimensions, basic size and tolerance given. So, in a similar manner, we always try to put a symbol like this and try to write what is the roughness we want on the surface to do. So, this is a finish symbol which is used while you can see in a manufacturing drawing while referring to the surface irregularities. So, this is the symbol which is used and the last thing is lay uh, direction of texture. So, if you look at it there was a tool which has moved in this direction to clear a straight line. This way it is called as the lay, the lay is the direction which is. So, when you try to measure uh, roughness we always try to measure it in the perpendicular direction. Okay. If you measure along the lay direction the roughness whatever you get you will be within one trench alone that is not correct. So, perpendicular, so this will be the feed which has been moved. So, this is you if you try to get the roughness along perpendicular to the lay, so then only you can try to talk about the roughness of this uh, surface. So, the two important things are waviness and roughness, you have to contact waviness, you have to contact roughness. So, here we are more focused towards roughness parameter as compared to that of waviness parameter. Roughness how is roughness defined? American Society of Tool and Manufacturing Engineers ASTME defines roughness as a finer irregularities on in the surface texture including those irregularities that results from an inherent action of a production process. Okay. Waviness is before machining whatever does that leads to waviness whatever happens during machining leads to roughness. Roughness spacing is the distance between successive peaks or ridges 
that constitute the predominant pattern of roughness. Roughness height is the arithmetic average deviation expressed in micrometers and measured perpendicular to the center line. So, this is otherwise called as R A. Waviness is the most widely spaced component of surface texture. Roughness may be considered to be superimposed on a wavy surface. So, this is a wave and here is a surface roughness. Okay. Waviness is an error in form due to irregular geometries of the tool producing the surface. On the other hand, roughness may be caused by problems such as tool chatter or traverse feed marking in a supposedly geometrically perfect machine. So, in correct geometry of the tool produces waviness and roughness may be caused by the problem such as tool chatter or traverse feed marks in a supposedly geometrically perfect machine. The spacing of waviness is the width between two successive wave peaks. Roughness also it is the same. Waviness height is the distance between peak to valley. So, this is waviness, waviness height. What is lay? It is the direction of the predominant surface pattern ordinarily determined by the production process used for manufacturing the component. The symbol are used to represent lay of the surface pattern. For example, you can have a lay pattern like this, you can have lay pattern like this, you can also have lay pattern something like this. Okay. By looking at the lay pattern, we can try to distinguish what is the machining process which has been used to generate the surface. What is a flaw? They are irregularities that occur in isolation or infrequently because of a specific cause such as a scratch, crack or a blemish including bow, snaking and lobbying. So, these are basically defects in the workpiece itself we which cannot be avoided both by the uh, process of initial generation and machining. So, those things are called as flaw. Surface texturing, the, it is generally understood as a repetitive or random deviation from the nominal size that forms the pattern on a surface. Okay. Repetitive, because in machining operation, what we do is there is a relative motion between the tool and the workpiece and as and when the tool moves, it is repeating the tool geometry when it starts moving in the contact machining. The surface texture encompasses wave roughness, waviness, lay and flaw is surface texture. So, surface roughness is a subset of surface texture, waviness yes, lay is also and flaw is also. What are the errors of forms? They are widely spaced repetitive irregularities occurring over a full length of the workpiece are some of the error of form. Common types of error which includes snaking, lobbying and bow. Bow means it is something like this. So, the deflection itself. So, analysis of surface traces. So, the irregularities whatever is there, now what we are trying to do is we are trying to somehow measure it and analyze the data, okay. measure and analyze the data. Generally speaking in a roughness, how do you do it? You just have a, a stylus or you just have your finger, scribe it over the surface. When you try to scribe it over a surface, then you see what are all the irregularities. So, you can have a mechanical way or you can have an electrical way. So, generally we keep a stylus. This stylus in turn is attached to uh, the Wheatstone bridge principle okay. and then finally, what we get is the output. This output is calibrated and then we try to get uh, what is the voltage, what is the magnitude. So, this will be in microns. So, this data is finally, converted into voltage calibrated and displayed as microns. So, you remember last class we last lecture we saw about the transducers. 
So, in the, this is one of the example for it. So, there are several parameters to measure height 10 point height average value is one method. So, it is also referred as peak to valley height. So, in this case we basically consider the average height encompassing a number of successive peaks and valleys of the asperities as uh, can be seen in the figure in the next slide which I will draw uh, a line A A parallel to the general lay of the trace is drawn. The height of 5 consecutive peak and valleys from the line A A are noted. So, what they are trying to say is there is a line okay, which is A A okay, and then what you have is you have a undulation on the surface. Okay. So, this is let us take this is H 1, this is H 2, this is H 3, this is H 4, this is H 5, H 6 and so on right you can go up to H n. So, what we uh, write a formula is R is Z, R is Z which is nothing but the average peak to valley valley height. Okay. This can be expressed as H1 plus H3 plus H5 plus H6 uh, sorry plus H7 plus H9 minus H2, H4, H6, H8 and H10 that divided by phi and the entire thing will be multiplied with 1000 divided by vertical magnification. This is nothing but to make sure see this view measure the roughness which will be with a stylus and then finally, what you get will be a style with a data like this. So, now you have to amplify this this is a surface undulate which will be very small. So, you amplify the signal and then you display. So, that is why we talk about vertical magnification which will always be reported in terms of microns. So, let us try to solve a problem. So, calculate the average peak to valley height value for a wave having the following height as uh, of a view from a vertical magnification of 100 x the following observations were taken uh, for the height value. Okay. So, now R is z will be nothing but 22 plus 24 24 maybe 20 21, 22, 24, 22 plus 25 plus 21 minus 21, 23, 23, 24 and 23 divided by 5 and this is vertical magnification is of 100 x. So, into 100 divided by no, this is 1000 divided by vertical magnification 100. So, if you look into it this one this one goes off and uh, if you try to subtract all those things what you get is going to be 0 microns only. So, here it is very clear the R z value after subtracting all these things what you get is going to be 0 microns 
this is one parameter to characterize a surface. The next parameter to characterize a surface is going to be root mean square value. Until recently, RMS values were very popular choice for quantifying surface roughness. However, this has been superseded by the center line average method. We will see what is center line next. The RMS value is defined as the square root of mean of squares of the ordinates of the surface measured from a mean line. The figure which we will show in the next slide illustrates the graphical procedure for arriving at the RMS value. So, root mean square value if you see the figure you have a length of span for which you take the measurement and then I am just converting this roughness value whatever you get. Okay. So, now what we do is we try to discretize. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. So, the root mean square value will be represented as h rms which is nothing but root of square root of h 1 square plus h 2 square plus h 3 square and, and then so on. h n square divided by n. So, this is called as root RMS value for the for the same surface you measure and try to get the irregularities. The only thing is uh, they are all equally spaced ordinates at points 1, 2, 3 and so forth. Okay. This is RMS value. So, let us take the problem here. So, now calculate the RMS value for a height for the following same observations taken for height values in the previous question. So, same thing where we got R z equal to 0 microns. So, we will try to get H RMS values here. So, how do we do it? We try to take H 1 square plus H 2 square plus H 3 square plus go on to H n square okay, divided by n. So, here what we get is after calculation for the same for example, what we are trying to say is take 22 square plus 21 square plus 24 square and go on up to 10. So, here it is going to be 10. So, that will be 23 square right divided by 10. So, the answer is approximately 7.22 microns. Okay, this is what you get. See for the same surface one of the parameters whatever you use you got 0 and the other parameter for measuring the surface you get is 7.22. The third one is going to be the center line average. So, in center line average is R a value is the most prevalent standard for measuring a surface. So, till now what we saw? We saw R z and then we saw H RMS, two things we saw, but R a is said to be most common. It is defined as the average height from the mean line of all ordinates of the surface regardless of the sign we try to uh, get here. So, what are we trying to say? It is expressed as R a equal to uh, A 1 plus A 2 plus A 3 going on up to A n and then what we do is we divide it by a line length L which is nothing but summation of A by L. If you look at the figure, so it will be something like this. So, you have, so this is your L. This is your A 1, A 2, A 3, A 4. Okay. So, what you get is the summation of R A is equal to summation of A by L. So, this uh, R A 
is an index of surface texture comparison and not a dimension. R A value is a surface texture comparison. The valley is always the value is always much less than peak to height value. So, what is this? This is R Z as compared to R Z this values are less. It is generally a popular choice as it is easily understood and applied for the purpose of measurement. So, this is very commonly used and the other thing you should also know is you have measured three parameters R Z, H R M S and R A all the three values need not give the same all the three values need not be the same. You can use one in index to measure a surface and compare this with the other other process or something, but for the same index. Okay. R A is an index of surface texture comparison and not the dimensions. So, if you look at it for varying processes for varying processes they have already predefined what will be the roughness generally we get. So, this is published in several handbooks for example, you take metal cutting, sawing, planing, drilling, milling, boring, broaching, reaming you will see what should be the surface finish we can expect. So, this is R A in terms of meters microns and you can also express in terms of inches. So, if you see here the values are decreasing when you move down. So, when we take reaming operation the value might be expected to fall from 4 microns uh, it might go up to 0.8 microns. If you do not get it in this range then it is basically we have to uh, re uh, check the process and bring it under control. So, reaming is a process now if you look at abrasive processes super finishing you can go up to 0 0.05 microns. When you look at forging you see that the dimensions fall above and the other operations it is much more coarser. So, specification of surface texture characteristics design and production engineers should be familiar with the standards adopted for specification of a character of the characteristics of a surface texture. Symbols are used to designate surface irregularities such as lay of the surface pattern and the roughness value. So, there are symbols which are used like what we in the dimension measurement we, we saw symbols like roughness uh, we did uh, saw straightness, flatness, run out circularity, cylindricity same way we also have uh, the symbols for surface texture and this surface texture when we try to talk about the lay pattern is also very important to note. So, this is a typical symbol and here we write down the magnitude value whatever it is. Okay. So, parallel to the plane of projection this is perpendicular to the. So, when we look at this we will should understand what how is the roughness measured parallel to the plane of projection perpendicular to the plane of projection cross in in two oblique directions to plane of projection will be x multi direction uh, then an approximate circular for example, facing then approximately radial. Okay. So, here we it is random in nature. So, it is called as multi directional. So, these symbols are given on a surface. So, what they do is there is a surface or suppose if there is a shaft. So, if the symbol is given like this, so they say R A. So, here it can be R A equal to x x value. So, then by looking at the lay we will know what is the process done and what is the output taken and here is a symbol. So, if you look at a specification of a texture characteristics it will be here you will have maximum R A minimum R A maximum R A you will have what is the waviness height what is the maximum waviness height what is the maximum waviness width and there is something called as cutoff and maximum roughness width and here is the lay direction all these things are part of the game what is cutoff for example, you have a surface right this surface first as and when you start moving the stylus it will have a running in wear or it will try to establish a surface and then you will try to have a measuring surface maybe 
this is the measuring surface. So, in this measuring surface we try to find out what are all the sub segments. So, those things are called as cutoff lens. So, methods of measuring uh, surface finish there are basically two approaches for measuring surface finish one is by comparison the other one is by direct measurement. The former is simpler of both, but it is more subjective. The earlier days they used comparative. So, what they did was they had a uh, they had a standard. So, in that standard they had several samples and each sample they will uh, have values. So, uh, uh, the workshop operator or the uh, superintendent used to scribe the surface, scribe the workpiece surface, compare and say okay, this is equal to this first grade, second grade, third grade or fourth grade, he used to say third grade, then correspondingly for this there will be a value which is given. So, then they compare it and see. So, or they have two surfaces looking at the surface they try to do it. Comparative measurement advocates assessment of surface texture by, by observation or feel of the surface. Microscopic examination is the obvious improvisation of this method. So, put it under a microscope and look, but direct measurement is the best method to measure. But the two major drawbacks are the view of the surface may be uh, depictive, two surfaces that appear identical might be quite different. For example, these two surfaces can have a RA value as 1 micron. The textures are completely different, the roughness are completely different. So, you can have two different profiles, but have the same roughness value. So, if this is the case, then it becomes very difficult when we use this visual technique or comparison technique. The height of the asperities cannot be readily determined. You can only touch and say, okay, this process is done by drilling, milling, but exactly if there is a peak, then you do not know when the load is applied, what is the load this peak is going to take, how is this going to get damaged and other things. However, this method is also subjective in nature and depends on large extent on the judgment of the person, which is touch. The limitation has driven metrology experts to devise ways and means of direct measuring surface textures by employing direct methods. So, the direct measurement enables a numerical value to be assigned to the finished surface. So, rather than saying it is it is rough, it is, uh, it is slightly rough, now we would like to see what is the real magnitude value given to the generated surface. So, that is the direct measurement. So, in direct measurement we always use a stylus system, you initially what you used as your hand now replace the hand by a stylus. So, what happens in a stylus? This stylus will be something like you can have a stylus and this can be resting on a uh, something on a fulcrum or something. So, this is pivoted here when this fellow moves up or down, so you can start measuring what is the deviation. So, stylus system of measurement is the most popular method of measuring uh, surface finish. So, here is a mechanical thing which I draw. So, you can go back and see in comparator how did we do, we had a pivoting point, then we had a fulcrum. So, in the same way you can also try to change this pivoting point and other things with an electrical circuit. The stylus draws across a surface of the workpiece generates electrical signals that are proportional to the dimension of the asperities. So, here is mechanical you can also have electrical. The output can be generated on a hard copy unit or stored in some uh, magnetizable media. This enables the extraction of the measurable parameter from the data which can quantify the degree of surface roughness. The following are the features of the stylus system. You will have a skid or a shoe drawn over a workpiece surface such that it follows the general contour of the surface as accurately as possible. A skid or a shoe stylus has a skid. Okay. The stylus that moves over the surface along the skid such that its motion is vertical relative to the skid, a property that enables the stylus to capture the contour surface roughness independent of the surface waviness, we use this. An amplifying device for magnifying the stylus movement and record it and finally, you try to measure the mean of it. Okay. Thank you very much.